Hello, I'm Mike Weatherford. And I'm Billy Busey. Welcome to the Mike Weatherford Show. Billy, can you believe it's been a month already? What? Yeah, it's been a month. 30 days? It's been 30 days we've been doing this little dig right here. Wow. Hanging Man. out with you seems like it's been a lot longer than that. Oh, uh, I'd imagine. <laughs> Guess what we got going on tonight, Brent? I'm afraid to ask. We got Sheriff Henry County Sheriff Josh Fry coming on. He's going to talk to us about what's going on in Waverly. He's going to tell us the wants and the needs of our neighbors over there, man. They've had it rough. Well, I'm we're going to talk about uh, some uh, HR 498, some of the 480, some of these uh, bills that's going on out there. We're oh, going to talk bills. a little bit about Afghanistan and. Uh. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, our, some of our guests we got coming on. Oh, you mean future? Future guests, man. We got a good line of them, man. Yeah, I've been hearing we, about some. We've had a, you know, a lot of good guests, man. I mean, we've had a. Well, my goodness, look what we started off with. Oh. State representative, and then went on a tater haze. Man, we started out with a Representative Bruce Griffey. That was a very informational show, if you think about it. Oh. You know, a lot of people this was miss understood the, the the highway out here and uh we got it got him on here and he explained to us what was going on and i thought he did a good job at explaining i, I did too and uh i learned a whole lot you know kind of behind the scenes and uh it's amazing to me still how some of the politics went you know that the other representative that he he was no you know he yeah. took his place and then back and forth from a approved lane two lane to back and forth to a four five and, and really they don't know yet what it's going to be that's no. what that's still up in there that's a shame man. it is a shame man i mean you know you think that uh if they going to fund something like a four-lane highway when they first start the darn thing they'd get the money where we could do the four-lane highway and they finally trimmed it around a tree now you can actually see it's 55 when it turned to 55 out there <laughs> yeah. expected josh or somebody be sitting down there waiting for me to come through oh, that's right you know what think about this after we had the, the state rep bruce grippy on here tell us all that we had the uh tater hayes the guy building the highway I'm you know he he, he sort of went along with a lot of what the the uh state rep said he yeah. uh he uh he agreed that uh what was going on was uh basically what he said it was and we found out the ins and outs of how you build a highway. I thought one of the good things about Tater being on there, not only does he build the roads and figured all that stuff out, but he is actually a resident that was affected by that. That's right. So That's I right. thought that was absolutely You know, there's a lot more to it than just perfect. taking a bunch of gravel and spread it out and put some asphalt over. Look at all the stuff he told about they had to move. Oh, yeah. The, I, the first time in right. the state of Tennessee That's that right. it, all that was tried to be done at once. One time, so, man. I take know, my hat off to Tater. You know, oh, everybody talking about, oh, it da, 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 da. should have had Murray down here. Yeah. Good girl. Man, do you remember like this Kentucky one right Rose. here? This show right here, Red, I'm still thinking about this. Do you remember the MUFON, Mr. Oh. Terry Lynch, the yeah. UFO? UFOs, the Area know? 51. I haven't seen her since then. You reckon maybe that she got abducted again? Oh, I doubt it. I, was, I don't know. I don't know, man. What do you think about that? Be honest. I'll tell you what. I think there's something out there, and it's not just – after talking to her but the things that i've seen the government you know like finally releasing some of that but now then you're wondering how much is it the technology that we reversed and some of that might be our own stuff now then we got the space force you know you the, know so i can tell you this billy be seen between the civil war and world war ii look how far we come far as military and all the technology well, you're right about and that and think about it from before times up till the Civil War, it all stayed the same. But after the Civil War, the military and all these technologies started flying on between 1862 and about 1942. Look at the technology change. Something happened. Yeah, there was something that I thought was really interesting. There's a place out there in Texas I want to go check out. They had an alien out there that he crashed. They went and scooped him up, and they buried him, gave him a Christian I seen burial. that. In a well, and, wasn't it? Well, they, that's where they put the parts. And that's the guy right. that that bought that land from the judge he used that well and did you see his hands and all the tumors and all that yeah, other crazy yeah. stuff and the, the, the town won't let them dig it 
So you uh, try and still trying to convince me. You know, ever I ain't since, trying to convince ever, you. It's ever, all on your own. Ever, ever since that show, you've been coming up to me and telling me, Mike, I know you don't believe that, but I believe, you know, you try to convince and, and you're still trying. I like stuff like that. I like I a little too. bit, you know, I can't I, help it. Star like Wars it was pretty cool hey, to me. I'll give you this much. I think it might be a Bigfoot out there, too. There something's out there. Foot. Is there? There is one. I've seen him. Uh-oh. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Oh. I do believe this much. Okay. Miss Terry believes what she said. Well, yes, I, I, I give believe her that. that. She did believe it. And I'm still thinking. She made me get a little bit closer to believing this, Billy, yeah. but I ain't 100% sure. I ain't sure about nothing, to be honest with you, except death and well, taxes. There's a lot of other stuff, too. There's nothing. You talking about aliens, I thought what was kind of interested was there. They uh, got a feller by the name of Admiral Bird. Okay. Now, what I thought was really odd was the government, when he died and passed away, you know, time and stuff don't move quite as quick as it do now because we got Facebook, Internet, and everything like that. He told some people in uh, the British newspaper about him fighting aliens and stuff down there. Then we got Washington, what D.C. Was what year was that? Oh, that was, uh, I believe it was after World War II. Yeah, they had them drugs there. See, Hitler came up with that drug. <laughs> it all relates drug. back to drug use. Okay, yeah, I'm but here's the you. thing I don't like. If he was my Drunk granddaddy, if he was my granddaddy, right. the military would give me his diary well, I or would be fighting. You got a point. And look so. at this one we had on here, man. We had the Henry County Sheriff. He's still on here tonight. Oh. The sheriff's still here. He's waiting. He's you out there. He's going to bring the police around well, me, the judge. The sheriff has been out doing his job today. I, I watched him a while ago when I turned the green room. He was polishing his handcuff and loading his pistol back because he's been working Man, today. Kind of hard to let them. Put. Next thing I know, you're going to have ice in here. I'm going to be in trouble. Oh, uh, yeah. I, have, I don't know. Have you got a green card? No, I, I, I keep telling y'all, I just look like an illegal. Alien. Oh, okay. A lot of other things you look like. We won't bring that up. Hey, I look like a liberal. Well, we had the sheriff in here, too. Remember I look he, like a convict. Well, you, well, I guess I am a convict. Well, Never we mind. all know that. Hey, remember we had the sheriff come on? Mm -hmm. That was an excellent show. Yeah, you know? that was. I really liked that because we was able to cut up. He, he liked Tater. Yeah. The good one. That mayor, too, boy. Uh, Woo! The, sh the sheriff is a down-to-earth guy. Well, yeah. You know, we That's why I him. backed him. That's right. We spoke with him. We talked with him. And he explained everything going on down there, and he didn't call no question I asked him. And you know what it did? It, it, it showed me, and it probably showed you, and I bet it showed all these viewers out there how much of a just a normal guy he is. He didn't. It didn't sound uh, as my daddy said. He wasn't uppity. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not uppity. He's, just he's a really calm good. guy. I mean, he come from a very good tree. <clears throat> he I did, mean, Mr. Rod Fry. You can't. No, you can't beat that. You he's said something about. Did, did he fall out of a tree? <laughs> I may, may have. Well, they, well, they still claim know. he's the best-looking sheriff. Remember that rumor going I, around? I do. I actually come out of your uh, muffler shop. Well, that's what the rumor is. I don't know who said it up there. Yeah. I just heard that rumor. I don't know if uh, you know, I better hush. The sheriff might can hear us in that yeah, green room. Yeah, he might. He might. Uh, but be careful. Yeah. Uh, then we had the uh, city mayor, Carlton yeah. Gerald. Boy, that one right there was – that was, was really interesting because uh, <coughs> I didn't really quite understand – how we got a city mayor and why we had a county mayor and everything like this and like he laid it out. Yeah, we got it. The city is run by a city manager form of government. Right. And he told, like a board of directors. That's right. Like. And all the mayor does is gets elected amongst the uh, other yeah. commissioners. They picked sort of like the head of it. Yeah. Now you got to admit, Carlton Gerald come on here loaded for bear. Well, I'm gonna tell you what he. Uh, he sure did do a good job he on did. it. I, I, on I, I'm proud of him. I thought I thought Tater did a good job on you, but I'm gonna tell you what. Oh, Carlton, son, he come at yeah. me. I looked at you. I said, I got me alive one tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good one right there. I mean, all of them been good. I haven't had one bad yet. Uh, I hear an echo. I don't know where it's coming from, but that's okay. And don't you remember this well, one right here? We're now. not professionals. No, we're not. Did you not remember what we did for the nonprofits? We had three. Oh, that was awesome right there. I've got so much feedback on that. Me too. Tell, and, see, if I, see how good your memory is. Name all three of them. Uh, well, we had the uh, Dark Horse. Okay. We had Miss Lori from, uh, well, it ain't set free ministry no more. Uh, Steps to success? That's right. Something Steps of, yes. Yeah. Steps of success. Sorry, Lori, but we're, we, well, we, we know who you are. Yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, we had the Royal Hope Center. 
Where'd I have? I, I got them notes somewhere. We had the real um, ones yeah. And that, he was your buddy, Mr. Carl. Me and Carl grew up together. We come out yep. of the same area, drunk out of the same well over in West Paris. You know, what he's doing could have very well, if I hadn't had good parents, been something that, that I would have needed growing up. You know, they all three got some good deals going, and I still ask people to support them. You know, help them out. Yeah, help I was – uh, really amazed that now then you got some uh pamphlets and stuff like that up there at your shop about right. the dark horse that's right got it up there. and uh i'm looking forward to i've already several non-profits have already been reaching out to me and i told them i said as soon as we kind of get everything yeah. fixed then we're going to do we'll that do again like yeah it, you know I, I can't wait speaking of dark horse i can't wait to hear that thing is finished up and go down there and see a bunch of them veterans sitting around there you know, enjoying herself like they should be enjoying yeah. herself. Uh, we're losing our veterans. Uh, well, we just about take... lost all the World War II veterans. I mean, they got to be very old if they're still around. They're, we're losing them thousands a day. And then we're working on the Vietnam and the Korea War veterans. You know, when we got to get these people some help at these organizations we had on her to get their projects done, man. I mean, we are the volunteer county and the volunteer state. Amen. And we like to show out sometime. Oh, yeah. Man, I had to get out out for a little while. You remember that when I put you and old Tater in here? <clears throat> that had to be Boy, a that side. Was something else, wasn't it? We had Tater Hayes with Dr. Leah Watkins. She was the, uh, what is she, the director of schools? Well, uh, yeah, school yeah, director, school but, director. Or you could call her superintendent. Super. Or she's a doctor, not a medical doctor, but you know. Yeah, I've watched that show. All of them like to hear doctor, but yeah. they're principals and superintendents yeah, to me. I, I heard. No I, I watched that show and I seen Tedder trying to get his arm fixed. Oh, she's a medical doctor. <laughs> Explain to me that show. You the one that done it. I wasn't well, even around. It don't really make too much sense, but you know. Tater's the only one that would say yes, but well, I guess that does make sense. Nobody really wants to hang out with me. But we uh, I hang asked, out with you, bro. What, okay, what's oh, that? What, what the, Go ahead. What's that say about you? <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of information we got there, kind of what how they was dealing with the uh, mask and what they're having to be prepared for COVID and all that stuff like that, and then. Uh, you know, she's talking about how they've changed some of the standards and trying to uh, work on communication and teamwork. And um, she even touched on the CRT, the uh, racist theory, you know. the Critical race theory? Yeah. Okay. That. Well, y'all, brought, y'all talked about that. I heard that. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, okay. uh, I mean, it, it's out there in the news. And, and uh, you know, Billy, we don't – we are – We, you and I made a promise to each other when we started this little experiment here that we was going to let every side have a view. Well, we've been trying. You know, yeah, we man. reached out after we had uh, – Yeah, we'll get to that. M- m- but we do you know, everybody like that. We try to give everybody a side of, the, of what's going on out there because that's what makes the country and this experiment we call America that's work. That's right. That's why you got a left wing and a right wing because yeah. if it didn't, that eagle going to crash. That's right. That's right. And then we had another one on here. Man, have you ever seen the response to this one? This is our number one show. Well. Dr. Heather Melton. Yeah, you're right about that. But don't forget, you know, when we was talking to the superintendent, it was kind of about that yeah. plastic crash. Plastic crash. You're right. I forgot about that. See, I didn't do I'm that show. T- I'm so. going to take pictures of it. I'm going to put put that on the thing. It looks yeah. pretty awesome. Is it pretty? Anyway, back to Miss Heather, or Dr. Yeah, Heather. Yeah, better give her the respect well, she deserves. Because you yeah. might break a leg and need that woman to operate on you. I yeah. know how you live, Billy. When I say that, it's possible for you. Rough, ain't it? You are rough. You come in here sledding sideways, I don't, I don't know. half burn up, yeah. popping the top on My something. My favorite two letters is G and O. You are. Man, was she not controversial on her views. Well, you know, the sad thing about it is, is everything that she spoke, everything that she talked about. She had her facts. That you know, and, and, in, and you know, I did a lot of research because I knew what was going on, who was coming in, but you know, I was about thirty five minutes late for that show. So okay. but anyway. You know, uh I I had been watching her on Facebook and uh I had reached out to her and, and, and through a Facebook private message and she said, uh, no, I don't think I need to do that and I told her, I said, Okay, I understand that, but if you ever change your mind, you know, the door's open. Well, uh, I think the producer 
uh, Kevin, he, he contacted her, and he said, hey, I think Heather might come on. So I really went to looking at Facebook of what she'd been saying. I really studied it because, you know, she made me. I told her one thing on the show, if you've seen that. I told her, I said, one thing you did, my teacher would be proud of, you made right. me have to I read. I about that. I sit right over her. And she Who said, said uh, that? and she said, uh, laughed about that. But uh, I knew what she's probably going to say, and I looked at some studies. And there's all kind of opinions out there. But like I said, we give everybody the chance to come on this show. And we reached out to the other side about what Heather was talking about. And as of yet, we, that's not boy, it's not well, been filled, but I say it will be. It'll, be. it'll be filled. I don't know. I guess I got something to say about that. All right. I've been in communication with some of them people that's been talking about that. Here's the thing about it is, Miss Heather or Dr. Heather really didn't want to do it. But for whatever reason, she got moved. Yeah. And she came on board to talk about it because a lot of things out there don't make no sense. She enlightened us. And, well, that'd be one way to look at it. Well, then you got these other folks over there that's uh, saying they got facts. And me and you both have reached out to more than one person mm-hmm. about trying to come on and talk about yeah, this. Yeah, I want to be fair. If, if, that's right. Well, not only that. If they're really and truly believe in their heart that whatever Dr. Heather said could be dangerous, be the wrong information, and dangerous life, then you got a responsibility. Well, not can. only as an American, but as a Christian to try to help people out. Because you ain't supposed to hurt, you're supposed to help. There you go, Billy. I mean, that's, that's your opinion, brother. I well, that's it. it. You know, that's there one you of the go. things that you messed up. You told I, me that you are going to give me a voice. You got the voice. So. And I'm not going to pull it in. Everybody got their opinion. But you know what? It ended up being a good show. Oh, I believe it was an excellent show. And I, I'm amazed at uh, where all that show's at and it's got who, who's watched it and listened to it. And now then they're you know, scratching their head uh, and thinking about total, it. Total, it's about, I last I heard, and I could be wrong, fifteen to 18,000 interactions. That's a lot of people. You know, that's more friends than you have, Billy. Oh, yeah. Huh? Well, yeah. Daddy's right. I can only put them on this hand. That's right. That's right. So. I hope I'm on there, brother. <laughs> yeah, I believe you would I get would up be. in the morning and I come would. get me I early, be. late at night. I, yeah, I will. I, I don't know how late it is. I've seen you out late. Well, seen pictures of it. I'm not going there. I have to. St- not going oh. there. Well, I hey, can't believe you didn't say that. latest one. I was with. I understand. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know you got an announcement to make. We'll get to no, that. No, I ain't got. Uh, and our I, latest, I do. I'm a window shopper. All right. But I think that somebody's done gotten that window, what I hear. I don't know. All right. Well, Let I have been peeping like I'm geeking a few times. That. I'm going to come back to your window here in a minute. Oh, Lord. And the one we just released was Judge Vicki Snyder. Oh. Man, you talking about uh, information. That woman had it. I you think- know. Well, go ahead. My bad. We talked with her over I can't an hour. Get excited. You oh know. man! And we only got to the second day of a job of a of a uh, uh, of a uh, general sessions judge. We talked over an hour and a half, and she and I said, "Just tell me what typical week is." When she told me that she's doing four hundred cases in two days, and I and, and I can add that's a little average. Bit. That's and I added, average. You know yeah, what I mean? And it was that's two hundred a day. Yeah. Can you, I yeah. didn't know. There you go. And she's also the only mathematically inclined. She's the only full-time general session judge in our district, in our area. Really? Yes. Well, Remember she said that. I knew that because uh, some people used to call him my foster father, and he's one of your friends, too. I never realized the load that they have. You know what that tells he, me? He, he did juvenile. And you know what that tells me? When you got to have a full-time judge, it's a sheriff and the police department's doing their job. Well. Yeah, I guess so. Well, think about it. I mean, what else could it be? Well, but she I don't know. At times, it seems like they need some help because... Uh, but they're doing their job. The clock in court is full of There's a lot of idiots around here. Well, sure they are, and they're breeding and having baby idiots. Oh. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. But, you know... Uh, uh, that's why we need to stop bubble wrapping everything and take some of them warning labels I'm off. I'm a firm Ooh. believer in oh, removing warning labels. The shall survive. Because this country, gene pool, needs some, needs some help, brother. We want to do something about the warning labels. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, we just well, recap, folks, a little bit of what's been going I on. I got another goal. You just said that. 
What's that? You gonna well, start jerking warning labels off? Well, no. I was thinking about there need to be more of me. There's a friend of mine. I'm gonna tell you a quick story, Billy. Let me well, have your attention. You won't laugh at this. You got it. All right. Funny, my buddy of mine is a mechanic up in the northern part of the world, up, uh-huh. there, up there across the you know the Mason Dixon line. Yeah. And he's got a real cool label machine. Uh-huh. And he gets out of these cars when he works on them. He puts little stickers on them. It says, do not stick your tongue to, to the fan. You know, and he'll say, do not stick your tongue to this exhaust manifold. And I said, really? Said, yeah. He said, I'm so sick of warning label. I just stick random stuff under car hoods. And when I work on them, let them go. So can you imagine when it gets to another mechanic and they raise the hood and there's a warning label that says, do not stick your tongue to the fan? That's kind of like you know you ain't supposed to stick it to a 9-volt battery, but, but you still to. do. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. But you know what I'm really proud of? Of all these shows we've done in a month's time, Oh, Billy. I thought you were going to say me. I am proud of you. Are you? Yeah. Because after I got you out got on work on release, place. you ain't been back in nowhere. You've been good ever since I got you out on work release. I mean, what can I well, say? Yeah. He, you do pull a lot of strings. I I'm got amazed, you. That's Mike. why you call me Magic Mike. <laughs> yeah. Because I magically got you out of the jail cell, yeah. put you on a microphone, well, and Somehow earphone. you got me here. I don't I know. I got you up here. Well, that was part of your And deal. it's working. It is working. It is working. But you know what? That I'm proud of. We've done all this in, in a month, and that you and I are just sitting here talking to people and asking kind questions. Kind of like we're at the shop or That's we're right. at the hunting cabin. That's right. But you know what? We couldn't do it without these group of guys. It never, oh, you know, amen we, to that. these people, you know, and I've never take this as, as, as me, me, me. My name's on the show. That wasn't my idea. That was the producer put my name on the show. But, you know, we've got oh. Joshua Ball. He's a cameraman. All he gets to do is look at me and you throw that camera over. Yeah. we got Jason Ball. That's all he does is look at us. we got Ethan Shellac is a uh, – I hope I said his name right. He is a sound guy. You know, them guys do not get enough he, – He's starting out. That's right. They don't get enough recognition because, you know, without these camera guys and sound guys, can you imagine how we'd look and sound? Probably be really like bad. how we look and sound. Well, not too good. Well, we, they make us what we are, what we are. And then uh, Kill Media. Well, Kevin. I'm excited about that. Kevin has really showed out. This guy, that, well, he's to, blessed. Yes, right. The producer of this show, folks. I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I, he don't like me to talk about him, but you put my name on this show, so I get to say what I want to say. Is that not right, Billy? Yeah, that's and right. your name's right beside mine, Billy Busey. Uh-huh. Look real close. He's uh-huh. in fine printing. Here, take your glasses out and look while I'm doing this, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll take them out since you told yeah. me that. Yeah, but see. Uh, you see it? Oh, yeah. There it is. Uh, this guy has got credentials about, I don't know, a foot and a half long. He worked for Home Shopping Network. And now I don't really know what he does. He's told me who he works for. But I don't know what he does. But he's always busy doing this. It's, it's like, called editing. No, he's got a, he does this for people all over the country, all over the world. Oh, no. If you happen to be back in China and somebody else is in Australia and you own a corporation, you want to put them all together. It's not Skyping. It's some kind of international. It's pretty pretty serious deal he's doing. And he's still got time to do our little show. And he's got a website, yeah, and he's got MyParisTV.com. That's My where Paris. we're going to eventually TV. land this show is on his channel. It's going to be MyParisTV.com. We're going to finally land on that thing, and that's where you can go and see what's going on in Paris. You can hear, you can hear the Mike Weatherford Show with Billy Busey. Uh-oh. And you can watch all these other shows. He's got uh, a show about uh, – uh, the UFOs on there. I wish I knew the names of them. I would promote them. He's got all that on there. I mean, he's got a a whole lot of stuff going on, and we Even are no just matter. one oh, spoke yeah. in that kill media. We're just one spoke in that wheel. Oh, yeah. That's all it is. But, you know, folks, I want y'all to always think about these guys that I just mentioned. You know, it ain't just Billy and I. I'm being serious, Billy, sitting up here. There's a lot goes on to do this little show we do. You know, and – we just sit here, and, and Billy looks pretty, and I look stupid, but we just sit here, and uh, we talk, but there's a pretty lot of Pretty silly. About, pretty silly is who we are. Yeah, pretty silly Billy. Right behind, you know, and, and uh, but you know what? We have bull crapped enough. We got to get serious. Because, you know, I told you a while ago that the sheriff's in the green room. I looked in there before I come in here, he was still polishing them handcuffs and loading that gun up. We're going to have to get him in here. And we're going to have to talk about what's going on over in Waverly. And he's going to tell us what they need. I got it. He needs it. The volunteers need to go over. And uh, let's go with the sheriff. 
Folks, we're going to take a break. We're going to do the bill paying and so I can get some money and pay Billy yeah. to keep him here. I just look cheap. He just looks cheap. He's not cheap, trust me. We'll be right back in a minute with the I Henry I County Sheriff, it. Josh Fry, talking about work. Don't go on. This presentation of the Mike Weatherford Show is being brought to you by... Paris Power Sports, a bad boy and skag mower dealer and service center that is the area's leading power sports company since 2016. Mow with an attitude and power on. Napa Auto and Truck Parts. With over 95 years of experience, you can trust the Napa know-how. Take Me Back Cafe, delicious home-cooked family-style meals in a nostalgic, warm, and inviting atmosphere. Take Me Back Cafe, great for the entire family. And the attorneys at Hawley and McAdams, who with over 90 years of combined experience, pride themselves in competent, thorough representation, utilizing their vast experience in a broad array of practice areas. Voted favorite law firm in the 14th Annual Reader's Choice Award, Hawley and McAdams are proud and honored to serve you. Weather for show. I told you uh, before we went to that break there that uh, we had the sheriff in the house, Billy. Hello. Josh, Hello. how are you doing? Doing Josh, great. Josh Fry, Henry County Sheriff, man. Glad to have you. Thanks for having me back, Mike. I just wanted to reach out to you and want to come and share a little information about what we've been doing. I wish we could jerk on your chain and have fun we had, but we still may, but this is pretty serious stuff you don't hear about, ain't it, brother? Yes, sir. A yeah, lot of yeah. people suffering right now. Would you just go right in and tell us what's going on? Yeah, I will. So, the um, reason I asked for uh, to come on tonight, though, Mike, was to tell what the Sheriff's Department um, has been trying, where we've been trying to help the flood victims of Waverly uh, for the past, since Saturday, anyhow. Um, and you said something earlier in the show that I want to say is spot on. Uh, we are the volunteer county of the volunteer state. And, uh, and, and, uh, Amen, brother. And I can say since uh, Sunday when I first put a post on Facebook that the Sheriff's Department was uh, taking donations, the people of Henry County have stepped up and showed out. They have it, showed it's uh, amazing what you see in other businesses has got all the d- donation goods. You walk in somewhere else, Yes, yes. So we, we uh, so just to give you a little recap. We put a, uh, we got a call uh, Saturday, late Saturday afternoon. Um, it's the first time I knew the flooding was going on and uh, got a call from a jail administrator and uh, he said, hey, Humphreys County has called. Uh, they're needing to get inmates out of their jail. They've lost power or losing power there. Uh, they didn't have any running water or anything like that was any flooded? longer. Was they flooded yet? I don't know if the jail was flooded or not, but the, the town had been flooded and water receding uh, at this point. But uh, he wanted to make sure I was good with taking some of their inmates in. I said, most definitely go over, help, do whatever they need to do, get done. And so we took a crew of uh, some of my correctional staff over. Uh, they picked up some inmates brought them back here so we're currently housing some of their inmates Uh, so at that point uh, after that I just decided uh, what can we do to help so Sunday morning um, I made some contacts with some different folks uh, at Compassion Church uh, there in Waverly and we uh, found out exactly what their needs were at that time and I put something on Facebook and and the the amount of donations poured in when we loaded up yeah uh, monday morning to go over yeah. there uh it was amazing yeah, I bet it was, it shocking. was uh, so we we uh loaded two big enclosed trailers uh, and two pickup truck loads of stuff uh monday morning took to compassion church and um is is, is the let me butt in a second is there needs of fluid is it constantly moving of what they need it's constantly moving i'm uh, sure it would be it is uh when the first uh trip uh they told us they needed like bottles of water non-perishable uh, diapers uh cleaning supplies um just a lot of necessity stuff like that sure. so uh just humane things yes and, and when we pulled up at that church uh monday morning i took a group and, and my wife went with us and uh with all this stuff and i was just 
shocked uh, at the amount of stuff and the outpouring uh, outreach from communities around. There was even a semi-trailer there uh, parked in the parking lot of Compassion Church that said God's pit crew on it somewhere in Virginia uh, that was unloading pallets of waters and, and non-perishables and and like uh, these five-gallon buckets that I, I don't know what was in them, some type of necessity items that they were just pre-packaged. The people come in, get one, and, and go. Man, that just that, that humbles you, don't it? It does. So when we left there... Um, that's the south yes that's right. uh, and you know I've, I've spoken with uh, that's why we love it here that's right and, and this is what we do and, and you know you look at, I know Benton County Sheriff's Department has been taking the donations to they've sent semi loads over uh, of course they're in essence six miles apart sure. pretty much from Camden you know yeah. Benton County to Waverly that was and a little bit affected in, in parts of Benton County too is that correct very little though yeah uh, so it just I thought it was all high water until like I seen some of them pictures and I was like good gracious right. alive. so, so it, it always floods it does and you gotta in a time and place in our country right now where we're all struggling to agree to disagree a lot of times yeah you're seeing people from everywhere together. pull together and for a common good Man, cause you know, that's that's that could be i don't want to get religious but sometimes god works in mysterious ways. he does he does had you seen the damage Did so you... i've seen some of the damage uh, as we were going in we tried not to uh, compassion church sets on the outside of town uh -huh. so we didn't get uh down into like the main downtown area but everything we could see uh you know i'm used to seeing um since i was a kid tornado hits here it, it tears up a little bit hits over here tears up a little bit um but just the widespread destruction of pretty much the whole town and, and you know josh it's, 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 it's houses it, off of foundations i the mean people that we lost and that, that, that lost their life in that is just that tells you how fast that flood come in i mean you know you would think a flood slowly builds up and you wake up in a little bit of water in your floor you walk outside get, this i reckon was just like a dam broke well i was told that uh one of the boys in the dollar store or whatever right there where that creek is that he seen water just coming through that he was stalking the shell and was like what what where was this water coming from and then the snap of your finger that's it was right. four yeah. foot and and that's what i've been told i don't know uh any details as far as what caused the flooding right. I, I do we do know uphill well, from not there job too, no know uh you know mac ewan uh which is uphill from waverly is where the right. the large amount of rainfall seven, was i heard up to 17 inches of rain right. in a short well, amount that, of yeah, time uh, yeah, 17 geez. less than 24 i was yeah. actually well, in how, it, many, how, how many gallons of water 17 in, well, it's unreal that's a lot that's See, a lot uh, I'm, I'm in i'm in communication with one of loretta lynn's uh granddaughter's husband so i've been in contact getting information where we need to send stuff who we need to talk to right and uh the stories that he tells me there's three creeks running through there yeah and it just over you know and then i talked yeah. to somebody from here that tried to go down there and help and he put his boat in he said he's never seen current as stout and just as rough said it scared him to death sure i've not ventured over there because i could be no help and i didn't want to hinder you know and uh but you're going to get to where people can yeah so yeah. so let me so i've reached out to yeah. the pastor again at, at uh compassion church um pastor cody there and uh asked them again what they needed what their needs were and so this time we were told uh, i put this post out yesterday afternoon flashlights batteries cleaning supplies shovels rakes work gloves um first aid stuff like band-aids um alcohol wipes any basic little first aid item yeah. so we we started that uh yesterday afternoon and we're leaving out in the morning again to go over another big load another big load at least and you know a lot of these are you know 
box of band-aids neospore and stuff they're little bitty items yeah. but i can already tell you when i left the office this afternoon was uh, we're definitely going to have at least one enclosed trailer of these types of items so, going back tomorrow let me ask you a question sheriff is it is it is your lobby open 24 hours our lobby's open 24 so hours if somebody's hearing us i'm gonna look at the camera if you're hearing us you're hearing what the sheriff says that they need and they need us to help them so uh whatever his list he says i want y'all to just do what you can to help these people because you know what sometimes it can be us that need help exactly it can be us to be need help sometimes you know and and you know, you've lived here all your life, Mike. I've lived here all my life. We've been in these situations sure after have. after major storms where we needed help. Yeah. And, and people get, and people come. That's right. So it's time for us to return that it's favor. It's time for them. So yeah. go, your list of stuff that uh uh there's a phone number on here. Yeah, I've got the phone numbers if if Yes. Okay. So there's two And, and uh, hold on, I can see on my uh monitor up here that he's got names and phone numbers so give it to him yes so there's two people we're dealing with uh at compassion church there uh his, his the pastor's name is cody uh his phone number uh and he's perfectly fine with me giving these out is uh 901-482-3194 and then the lady that is over um like the outreach part and volunteer um, organization. If you, uh, for people that wants to come over and volunteer their time. Boots on the ground. There you go. Boots on the ground. Uh, so her name is Shauna or Shana, and her number is uh, 931-209-5974. And with that being said, what they're doing a lot of now is um, – you call, you show up at Compassion Church at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they're sending different groups out into the community to do certain things. You may be um, cleaning up, squeegeeing out a house. You may be delivering water to neighborhoods. Uh, just a multitude of things oh, that they've man. got. But th this lady is volunteering to organize. to organize all this. She's with the church. She coordinates the volunteers and sends them out in the community. That's a massive job. A massive, massive. Have you heard if they need in tractors and equipment? I, I have not heard I any of that. These people right here could tell you the phone numbers. They could probably tell you the yeah. people to get in touch with. I know Chief Watson at the city and, and some of his guys are going over right. tomorrow uh, as well with some side-by-sides and, and going to help do some things. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard if they found all the missing people yet? As of last, I knew they have not not that's terrible um we've just been doing we're doing a lot of behind the scene things i understand you can't say a lot i understand uh, that i appreciate what you have told us yeah um and and let me say i want to tell you a story that come out of, of this today um very heartfelt story uh but i i got a guy reached out through some channels to me today uh he's from big sandy tennessee i'm not going to give any names uh but he wanted to give his house uh, temporarily to a flood victim over there. And in particular, I'm sure we've all seen it, to the family that lost a seven-month-old twins. Oh, Lord. And uh, they got two other kids. It's a husband, wife. And, and anyway, he says, I want them to know that they can come stay in my house. I'm going to move out. They can have my house as long as I want. They want it rent free, no charge. Man. And so, I contact I contacted Pastor Cody, who knew this gentleman um, that had lost his children, and and so he he got us in touch. We've arranged, and the last I knew this afternoon, uh, as soon as everything settles down, this family's going to be moving in this man's house oh, in Big Sandy. Oh man, Billy, can you believe so, that? Yeah, it's not just good. Henry County reaching out; no. it, it's it's everywhere. But I, I was just like, you know, that that jerks at you hard. It does. You know, it we does. can sit here, you and I can tell all these stories. You can tell all these stories about the damage you've seen and what they need, and we can't really grasp it. You know, and, and until you just 
you, you know, I don't know what happened, but you're, you're just doing your life like you normally do at that particular time. And all of a sudden, I've seen photos of houses floating down there. That's thing, correct. And you just lose everything you've got. And that's horrible. But so but when quickly, you, but, didn't even have time. Yeah, but when right. you lose a child or a husband or a wife, I mean, it, it just jerks me. The older I get, the more emotional I get about that. Because, you know, it, it, I think about my children and my grandchildren. Sure. It just kills me to think about that. It is. It, it's a... Uh, and like you said, the houses. That's the part of being a sheriff. It's not the fun part, ain't it? That's not the fun part. And, and I feel I feel for the chief of police over there, Mr. Uh, oh, chief Lord. Gillespie, Sheriff Davis is over there. Um, He's really struggling. They, they're, you know, they they've got tired. their hands full. They look tired when we've seen sure. them. Hey, they're struggling. You know it's, they are uh, trying to, you know, everything's going on. And, and, and they lost cell phone service. They couldn't make calls, and, and they couldn't get over. You know, if you was hung up and you needed help, we all rely on these darn phones, man. I mean, that's all we rely on, and that, and, and that failed you. Sure. So I don't want to tell people that, you know, if – you can't rely on that phone. We got to find other means. You know, we, we got our life on our oh, phone. Yeah. And there's still places when we were there yesterday afternoon uh, that did not have cell service. Uh, they've got some portable cell towers set up, ones in Compassion Church parking lot, uh, but there's still places that don't have it. Let me tell you this they've still got first responders out there, law enforcement, I know for sure, that lost everything in this. Uh, in the floods, those guys are still out there working every single day, and they've lost their stuff at they've home. They've lost their stuff too. That takes a special person. We order. It does. You know they need some help too, man. They do. You know, is somebody feeding them and cooking for them? They and are. Care there's, of the uh, you know, there's there's an organization over there that's brought in. Um, portable showers and set up in a parking lot there's a um, one of the i think maybe tied or somebody's brought him um i got a truck a, i got that information a truck a washing machine dry whatever that wash clothes Open there's at, at 9 a.m don't it make you uh, ain't it make 150 your... loads a day two mesh bags full for uh the households towels and clothes no bedding right so that that's the information I got, and everything's free. Also, uh, don't it make you feel good being a Tennessean? It does. You know, it does. It makes you feel real good. It does. Uh, tell us again what I want everybody to know. What these people need, and what you know, the boots on the ground. What the, if you know what they're looking for, and and if you think that 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 fluid movement of supplies they need can be moving, you can add to it as you go. Sure. What do you think? Just just take take it over, Josh. So, Tell us what's so going on. at this point, we're collecting again. We're collecting first aid, um, band aids, neosporin. Um, antiseptic antibiotic wipes um, gauze medical tape uh, any of that coban any of that type of stuff that could be used for basic first aid stuff because uh, these guys and and, and these girls are out here and would you say they're not asking for any of that okay uh, just the basic first aid gotcha. stuff because gotcha. they're out here searching these areas they're getting bumps yeah. and bruises yeah. and cuts and scrapes they need something sure um Alcohol, you know, bottles of alcohol, sure. uh, rubbing alcohol. And that's going to be a hard to find enough they need because we got this corona going through here, and that's the same thing that you sure. need in corona. So it's going to be tough, folks. I mean, right. if you've got an extra, I hate to butt in on your no, share, but if you got an extra thing of Clorox wipes and you got an extra one, carry them to the sheriff's department because it's they are in high demand and low supply. If you've got some Lysol, if you've got some band aids, you know, we all keep that stuff for our emergency. But now's the time to really give it to somebody that really needs it. Go down to the sheriff's department. He said he's open 24 hours. He's leaving in the morning. Go to your house. Go through if you've got an unopened pack of anything like that. That's right. Because you know, we all hoarded that stuff up before, so you know you've got some left. So sure. the sheriff needs it. Go ahead, Sheriff. Yep. Uh, shovels, rakes, uh, which is a lot of time stuff we don't really think about well, sure uh, that they're on any. Um, Work gloves, yeah, uh, and you know the leather work gloves, preferably. Uh, Just stuff if you's going to work in your yard or your garden. If a tree blew down in your house and you was going to do that tree, bring them people what they need: rakes, shovels, uh, trash, blood, bags. trash bags. Uh, I can bug spray. Yeah, uh, we were over there yesterday I and dropping off, and, and they, somebody said. 
we got bug spray. I said, y'all going to need that bug spray. You know, you think about it, all that water is now yeah. lying in different low-lying yeah. areas, so the bugs are going to be terrible. So yeah. bug spray, um, let's see uh, what else we were looking for. Um, that's pretty much the first aid, the is rakes. The food, and is the food and the water, Josh, here? But then again, is that all pretty well right now? I know down the road, we can't forget this is not going to stop tomorrow. No. It's going to be our own a flood movement. Right now, is the food pretty well covered? So, I, as far as I know, uh, Compassion Church had some people. I mean, there's food coming in there daily. They had a okay. semi there again this morning. So, we need to concentrate on the other stuff. The other stuff at right. this point. Gotcha. And, and if you contact uh, Pastor Cody or, or this other lady that I gave you the number, yeah, put they can up, tell right? you He's gonna put it back uh, up. The, what their fluid needs are sure. as they're changing. Because uh, they're actually going out. Uh, they started this morning uh, going out in the community, going to people's houses, cleaning the houses out, squeegeeing out all the mud, uh, getting out stuff that was damaged or destroyed or whatever it may be, getting that stuff out so these people can start rebuilding their lives. You know, you're going to wear this out some... This is a long story. This is going to be a broom. long, drawn-out... Push brooms. So you're going to wear out some push brooms. It's what I call scratch broom. you got your big push broom with a handle, and you got your little scratch broom, the big handle, you know. Yep. They need them. But, man, I mean, I think Henry County is going to show out again. I think so. Uh, it started... this after, Like I said, this morning was... Uh, I put it out yesterday afternoon. This morning we had a few things... Um, this afternoon, I, it's we're going to fill up another trailer, yeah, and, and I feel like – and let me say this, too. Uh, a lot of people don't really know what to buy or maybe can't find the stuff to buy. Sure. Uh, we are taking monetary donations as well. Taking money? Yes. Oh, man. And if it's a check, it needs to be made to Compassion Church. We'll take it. we give it to the church. Uh, we've had some money, more money coming today. We had – Almost three hundred dollars. We took over Monday, and I'm so, going to write you a check for my personal when you leave for a yes, hundred dollars. Everybody else can write a hundred dollars. I'll write you a hundred dollar check when you leave so, here. And it's, uh, I want you to carry out down there and help them people because you know what? It could be me next time you're on here talking to that's help. Right. That's right. It what, could be any of us. Yeah, exactly. Now, what about the boots on the ground deal? Let's go back so over that. So, the boots on the ground, if you call these two numbers, uh, again, they're they're having check-ins at Compassion Church, 8 o'clock on, uh, in the morning, and they'll send you out with a, another group. Or, you know, if you've taken – if you're bringing 20 people, they may take you to an area and say, hey, we need to do this. They need to bring them some, some stuff and maybe prepared to work with, like boots I, I and gloves. I would say you need boots, gloves, Shake. go prepared. Yes, rakes, shovels. Yes. Just anything you think you, that you could right. use on that and, job. And I will say this. If you don't have that stuff and you still want to volunteer and put boots on the ground, Come on. they're not going to turn you away. They're no. going to find something for that's you to right. do. If you got elbow grease, they'll let you put you to work. That's right. Man, that's 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 sad. So you're going back over tomorrow. We'll be back early in the morning. I want you to give me a call and let me know how it goes, man. I will. I'm, I'm, I'm really... I'm really compassionate about that. Yeah. You know, it's just, so, uh, but it's, uh, I appreciate you doing yes, that, sir. Josh. I yeah. really do. I mean, not coming on the show, but what you're doing, you're stepping up and stepping out yourself. Well, you, you know, you're, you're out there hustling around and, and you're trying to get this done and you've been over there. You're not sure. somebody just, hey, guys, y'all go over and do that. You're there helping there. to, man, that's just another so, reason why Henry County's. So, so and, and, you know, like I said, it's not just, this isn't about the Henry County Sheriff's Office. No, it's not. This is about our community helping a neighboring community. And no different than Chief Watson uh, taking some of his guys over That's in the right. morning. It's about Has his police department and the community helping another community. That's all it's about, brother. You know, it's, it's, it's bad things happen to good people. You got that right. And they just didn't expect all this. That's I right. Mean, you know, in the tragedy of, of, of lost life and babies, and, and I'm sure mothers and fathers sure. and husbands and wives. and All ages. Yeah, and you lose everything you own and you lose a loved one. I don't know how to. I don't know how you would ever get through that. Can you right. imagine that? I can't. I don't it, it's, imagine uh, holding on all four of my kids. And yeah, just think about losing that. them twins like that. I, oh, man, I mean, I you, know, you lose your, uh, lose a loved one, and then you lose your home, and and you don't have nowhere to go. You're living in, you know, wherever you can find to live, and you got that sadness on your heart. I mean, it just bothers me. Well, I think I think we all got to stop and and, uh, in my opinion, take a step back. 
look to the good Lord above us and pray and pray for peace and comfort of what's going on in your life right then. Maybe this will stop some of the turmoil in our in our in our in our area. Sure. Because we all you know we might fight amongst ourselves. There's a song about it, but you outsiders best leave us alone, and we do come back together that's right you know we throw all the the, the the political stuff aside and it's just showing it right here there's all walks of people helping. that's right and i and that's good man that's yep. good i hope it, it helps tonight for what you're coming on here but i, I, I this is where you can come anytime i appreciate it because you're a excellent man an I excellent sheriff and and you're well respected by everybody in this community we're lucky to have you brother <laughs> We are lucky to have I you. I appreciate that. You know, I, I mean that. I We're lucky it. to have you. And uh, this, my door is always open. I if you need it. us, you call us and and uh, you get to see Billy. Yeah. That's the best part. That's right the there. best part. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter is good medicine. That's right. Laughter is good medicine. That's right. Man. Exactly. Uh, folks, I'm going to tell you, uh, you've got this. Uh, producer, would you put that number up and all that one more time for me, please? I'd appreciate it. I've learned to watch my uh, teleprompter up there. You go, folks. Contact these people, Pastor Cody and Shauna and, and Compassion Church. It's on uh, Clayton Road in Waverly. That's correct. Uh, get over there and contact these people and go to the Sheriff's Department and uh, carry that stuff that the Sheriff listed. And I'm pretty sure if you get on the Sheriff's off Henry County Sheriff's Office Facebook page, and I'm sure that stuff is listed on there. But let's show out again. Let's 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 let the Sheriff get up in the morning and load that trailer up, and he has to call his friends to bring him another trailer. I, that's how I want it to be. I want Henry County to help these people because you know what? There's going to come a time when Humphreys County is going to help us. That's, we're all in this together. But, Sheriff, I want to appreciate you, man. Thank you, Mike. I mean, uh, it, 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 it really means a lot to, to, to the community to have you come on here and talk about that and, and ask for help. And uh, I think we're going to help you. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Thank Don't you. be a stranger. I won't be. And, Billy, so you can see the law without having to run. Well, well okay. <laughs> First thing you done when he seen you come in the door when you was polishing your handcuffs a while ago, Billy started running. I said, Billy's not after you. Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff Fry. Thank you. If, uh, if anything we can do to help you in, in what you're doing down there, you do not hesitate to call me. Thank you, sir. I will do what I can. Don't leave. I got something for you. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Man, that's some terrible stuff down there, ain't it? That's pretty rough right there. Yeah. When you want all this information I got, Loretta right Lynn, now. Loretta, Miss Loretta down there has really opened up the doors down there at her ranch. All right, now uh, let me start. Uh, United Way mm -hmm. of Waverly, they take 100% donations for the flood victims. Red Cross of Humphreys County, they're doing the same thing. Eight Days of Hope, they'll be there as well. But... uh. Also, you got all your local churches, the First Baptist there in Waverly, the Church of Christ of Waverly, all the local churches right there, you take all that stuff. But here's the thing right here, it gets to me. Miss Loretta Lynn, everybody knows her, coal miner's oh, daughter. Yeah. She's opened up her ranch to the folks there, the campgrounds, the cabins, the RV hookups, all the shower facilities. They're willing to help out and let me give you who you really need to talk to. Her name is Taylor Lynn. And you're going to have to blame your cousin's husband for giving me that information. But that's who you need to contact once you get down there to the ranch is talk to her. So RVs, showers, campgrounds, it's open. Also, go to Instagram and look at Waverly. They'll have information on Instagram on how to help out the community down there so and also like he said that they got a tide truck they're gonna be doing 150 loads a day everything's free no bedding basically everything else except no bedding if you got it it's absolutely uh i've been in contact with uh one of miss loretta's uh granddaughter's sons he's a good good friend of mine from here at, Henry County, and he's the one that I've been talking to, trying to figure out what to do down there. Yeah, that's wonderful. They open it up too. Oh yeah. Now we got lots of people 
that's really trying to help them down there. And, uh, you know, that's a big, that's what we try to stay on top of here if we can, on the best we can on our little show here. We try to stay on top of the wants and needs of our surrounding communities. We're not just Henry County. We're, yeah, it's, we're, like, it's not just here, it's yeah. the area, yes, it's we're, the state. We're Tennesseans, you and I are, and we're also Americans. Yeah. That's so we right. want to talk about everything that we can help because, you know, there's enough bad going on in the world, Billy. Let's me and you try to make a little good happen yeah. sometimes, you know. You know, it's out there. There's yeah. good out there. Sometimes you think it ain't, but there is if you look. Yeah, that's what I try to keep telling myself. I'm trying to spread some hope, that's not right. the dope. Yeah. But the sheriff, really, he, he give a lot of information. I'm glad yeah. to know that we're, we're, we're showing out down there. Man, there's a lot of national stuff going on, too, Bill. Yeah. We got Afghanistan. What do you think about that little deal over there? Boy, you don't even want me to get started. That right there is an absolute mess. I heard the uh, so-called uh, illiter- you know, so-called president, <laughs> he said that, uh, well, it wasn't him. It's actually the uh, Pentagon spokesman. And he didn't say that his number one priority was the safety of United States citizens. That wasn't it. It was being pulled out from Afghanistan the 31st of August. That was his goal, number one. And they've got thousands. He said several thousands. He wouldn't even give you a number. He said it's changing hour by hour. I want to ask him, well, what is it this hour? you got all these people behind the fence, you know. And the sad thing about it is the White House herself said that – they didn't even want to call it stranded. He, she got all over at one boys talking about the American citizens that was stranded over. And then you turn around and you look on, on all them newspapers. There's four or five said it's to use the word stranded. Bad, bad situation that we've gotten into. Twenty years of being there, and we didn't know how to end it. Well, that's what's scary. You had twenty years over there. You would think out of twenty years, you'd be thinking we got to end this deal. Well, and it's sad all the way around. The people, even the American citizens, but what about the the the, the Afghanistan people that's going to be stuck over there? Billy, well, you know what? In a way, we turned backs on them. We did. But listen to this. On uh, uh, let me get my notes here. August the thirty first. You know who we got coming in? Mm. We've got a man, his name is uh, Richard Showborough. This man is a retard. He's young, but he just, you know, when they do this kind of stuff for a while, they get burned out. He was stationed in Afghanistan as an FBI, CIA guy. He knows all the history and all the stuff. He was over there during all these wars of what's going on. He's coming on the show August the 31st, and he's going to talk to us about uh, – human trafficking but he's also going to really got some information for us about the afghanistan because the 31st is a magic day that they told us we had to be out of there by right yeah that's what they said that's they right. said uh that's, right. that's a red date that's i a believe red, what i believe what the taliban red line they call red it red line is that what it is that's right so this guy right here is coming on that day and he's going to give us what's going on. And he's got his contact still in the CIA up there in, in, uh, in uh, God, it's FBI, CIA, up there in Langley, Virginia. He can tell you behind the scenes what he can share with us. He's going to tell us what's going on. And it's going to be nice coming on 31st. That's the D-Day, we call it. Yeah, well, we'll see what's going to happen. One yeah. of the things that upsets me is uh, I see how many American citizens – using their contacts to get these people out they're going up there telling them to take pictures at the gate try to figure out yeah. who's controlling it it's this unorganized and that. to no extent and that's what i keep going back and saying billy we've been over 20 years couldn't you think in 20 years you'd figure out an exit plan well if you do but here's the thing about it is we still ain't left germany we still ain't left Japan. Yeah. I think we still going to have to be on here. because you, Why are you going to have to be over there? Yeah. Because it goes all the way back to Isaac and Ishmael. Uh, this right. ain't going to stop uh, till the right. end of time. That's it's right. going to be I mean, evil versus good. Uh, that's right. So that's right. I know a lot of people ain't going to be happy about it, but it's just the way we it is. got to have a presence over there. What's sad is we had 2,500 people over there, military personnel, and we're still doing okay. But now, as soon as he announced the 31st, we're going to be moving out, that gave them a date. They started getting prepared. It's getting closer to the 31st. And if we ain't out of there, you watch and see. That that, that ain't right. As bad as I don't want to be over, as bad as I don't want my brothers and sisters over, we ain't got much of a choice. Yeah, you're right. 
You know what else we got going on? We got uh, some laws and bills and stuff they're trying to pass in a state of Tennessee and federally about uh, these vaccines and stuff. You know, we was off screen, off camera a while ago talking about vaccines, you know, and, and trying to figure out you know, which way to go on that. And they had a bill, H.R. 4980, is a, is a bill about uh, uh, basically about the vaccines, you know, making you mandate and stuff. Well, it's hung up. My resources, well, to, my resources told me that bill's hung up. But it may come on out since the FDA has approved this medicine for a vaccine. Yeah. They finally give it full approval. So this bill may move on through. But the House bill here in Tennessee is House Bill 13. The state, state government or is what it is. It's the state of Tennessee says that the, that the county health department, school boards, and nothing can. Uh, I don't make sure I can read my own right here. This was a text that I got. Uh, they can't really... Uh, Man, mandate you to take the vaccine or well, something. Yeah, there's a thing called yeah. the Constitution. But they stop short. This bill stops short of uh, making your employers stop from forcing you to do it. So what that bill said was, Billy, that uh, the locals can't make you do it unless federal somehow does it. But your employers still can force you to take a shot. So now, you can still force me to take a shot. Uh, yeah. And not, but here's the question I got. If they do this, and I don't know a lot of places are, are considering now, but I think the backlash may be too big. But here's what I'm wondering. Who's going to take responsibility? If I work for some big company and they said, you've got to take a shot, shot or you're going to be fired. And, I, you know, and I'm not saying for the shot or against the shot. That's not my point of this. But what if something happens? You're one of the few small, small, small percent that that shot affects, what if you are one of them? Who's going to be responsible since you was made to it? Well, That's a question that needs to be asked. Exactly. I think that the uh, so-called president, when he was up there talking about the vaccination when the, uh, it was approved by the FDA, looks like to me he could be held accountable for well, trying to, to say knows, something man. like that. But you think about what I'm saying. If they force you at a company, if you work at a big company, and they say either you take his vaccination or you're going to be fired, you know, and we all got to live, and we take it. And I'm not saying for it against it. I want that perfectly clear. I'm not stating it either way. I'm just saying if you force someone against their will and something happens to that person, you know, if they're one of the small percent, liable. who's liable for exactly. it? Exactly. I don't think the employer is. I think they got it propped up with them. But I think that it would be something that would be tried in a court, and then you know who the answer is on that. I think that it ought to be volunteer. I think if you want the vaccination, you yeah, ought to take the vaccine. Yeah, it's that's America. Right. That's right. But and I don't think there ought to be no penalty for not taking it. I don't think there should be a blessing for taking. It. I think it's strictly up to the person, you yeah. know. And, and that's and that's, that's debatable. Right. I could be debated down on that one, and that's and that's understandable. It's United States of America, that's not right. United Socialist of that's America. Right. You're right. You're right. Uh, I told you that wrong a while ago. That bill was 858 that stopped the health departments from uh, the power to mandate. That was wrong. It passed. That was a House Bill 858. This House Bill 13 was uh, state government in the school district. It's, it's another deal. When you look up House Bill 13 and House Bill 858, what that's about, that's, that's basically the state of Tennessee trying to help people to keep their rights, if you want to call it that. But... It's a slippery slope we're sliding down. You know, this analogy was given to me today by someone. If, if, if your company tells you, and this is just something to think about, that you got to take this shot because we don't want our workers sick and, and off, the, uh, you know, off the workforce. We need everybody at work. What's going to stop them from saying if, if a woman gets pregnant, you got to have an abortion because I can't let you off you know, working long enough to have this baby. Now, I don't know if that's a good comparison, but this guy told me that in the way he spoke that he had a good, a good question there. You know, if they, where are they going to stop at? If they force you to take a shot, what's going to be next? You know, I, that, that's the other thing. What when I seen them coming down, uh, wanting to tear down flags, wanting to tear down statues, where's it going to stop? It never stops. You know, when you slide off that slippery slope, there's a lot of things you hit on the way down to the bottom. And once you get to the bottom, and I've said this, and I tell my children this all the time, you know, if your neighbor likes golf and you don't like to golf and they're trying to tear down his golf course, stand up for his golf course. 
It's his right to go. Just like he needs to stand up for you for trying to tear up your racetrack. Because what you don't like today or you're not involved in because it's not your fight you claim, well, I don't care about that anyway. It will be your fight next time when you slide off that slippery slope. Because there's a lot of things that's going to hit on the way to the bottom. It could be something you care about. But by the time it gets to what you care about, it's too late. Kind of like prayer and Bibles in the school. Well, I... What's so sad is, you know, in Russia, of all places... They use the Bible. You Let me know tell why? You something, Billy. We do got morals. Bibles in the state of Tennessee in the schools. Morals. Do you know that? In some places. No. You can't have them. But there is a group that Dr. Main, I can't recall what he's talking about, but he's got this Bibles back in school through the historical cycles. When England stopped us from making Bibles, all the Bibles got wore out. So the first American Bible is a historic document. Dr. Mean, I listened to him the other night talk. He found oh. a, he found a way in his organization did. I wish I could recall the name of that, but I can't. He found a way through historical part. You know what I'm talking about? Because it's a historical document right. to teach about that in school. So he's Well, we better get all over it. You heard that out there, all you smart folks. Yep. He found a way to get it through. And I wish I had all the information. I meant to bring it, but with all this going on, all this you know, stuff, I just oh, yeah. happened to forget to bring it. But look him up. Uh, Dr. Ming Wang, I believe is his name. He is he is a guy that I'm going to try to get on my show. He is a uh, guy that come out of communist China, and he uh, run it over here. And got it. They're telling us to leave. I hear the music well, in my ear. I got one other thing to say. I got a couple of clothes. We've we, we got to do this right now. We need horses and riders and uh, stock trailers to help round up livestock and help move them. Where do they out go there. to? Uh, well, go to, we're going to put them out there, Taylor Lynn's Facebook page, T-A-Y-L-A, and then her last name, L Y N N, uh, and also a, go to. Uh, she's uh, got the white at Waverly on Instagram. What I'm trying to say is, just don't show up. There's got to be a place to go. So that information Man, is where it, they go. Yes. Don't show up just with a horse and call to them. They'll tell you where to go. There you go. All right, man, I, we got to go. I hear the music in my ear, but uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of what's coming on our show. Like I said, August the 31st, we got the retired FBI agent. We're gonna talk about human trafficking. We're going to talk about the southern border, and we're going to talk about Afghanistan with someone who really knows what this is about. The 7th of September, we got a guy from the Tennessee Farms Association. He's going to tell you about your gun rights in Tennessee. He's going to tell you what's happening, where the fights are coming in. This is going to be a good one. The 14th of, of September, we got the game warden. Steve oh, Burr coming in. He's bringing a biologist because that chronic waste disease is making its way into Henry County oh, slowly. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we're going to debate because they want to kill all the deer, and I don't think so. But anyway, then the 21st, we got, we got the first lady of the outdoors coming in. Brenda Valentine's oh. coming in on the 21st. She's going to come in there. Queen She's, of hunting. That's right, the first lady of the outdoors. She's going to share with us about her hunting trips all around the world she might even can lighten us on afghanistan i'm sure she's been over hunting she's hunted every animal in the world just about she is a well-known outdoor hunter oh, yeah so we're gonna have her on here and we're doing all these hunting and gun shows all right the, before deer them, season all them uh, shows i go around all the people that i might meet the celebrity hunters or whoever's yeah, in the all industry all they know all know her when so, i say paris tennessee what we're going to do we're going to do all these little old the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, they're all going to be live shows. Oh, These are right before the season comes on. There's things you need to know. So uh, he's telling them we got to go. So uh, what I want people to do, if you like our little show we got going here and you think it's a good thing, uh, go to Facebook and like us. But more important, go to uh, YouTube, subscribe to us. Tell your friends, tell your families, and everybody you know to tune into our show because we're doing something for you. It ain't for me and Billy. It's for you right. to keep you informed like we did tonight with Sheriff Josh Fry. Billy? That's right. Like it up, share it up, comment it yep. up, and help us on the come yep. up. Yep, subscribe to us. I want to see our subscriptions go way up. That gives us more power here. Billy? Lead us in closing prayer, as they say. Yeah, when we do that, I would. Boy, right, we, we need it. Thank you all for tuning in to the Mike Weatherford Show, and we look forward to seeing you on August the 31st, live, 7 p.m., 
be there. Yeah. This portion of the Mike Weatherford Show was brought to you in part by 54 Fuel Mart, a great place to eat with friendly staff and some of the best gas prices in town. Stop in for a bite to eat and get treated like family. That's 54 Fuel Mart, 1213A West Wood Street in Paris.